So uh, it's good to see you all. And first of all, let me just introduce myself. I'm Vishnu Vijay, uh, a proud trend trammer, and I teach the subjects PM, uh, AA, as well as AAA, as well as APM uh, at FinTram Global. And in this session, we will be discussing about the changes within the optional papers of ACCA, uh, which is which is effective from the September 2022's exam set setting. Now, when it comes to the changes, I know that we all might be a bit, you know, uh, a bit afraid as to whether it's going to be easy or will it be, you know, too much difficult? Will it make the exam more difficult or uh, are there any time management issues? There would be a lot of questions that you may have. So feel free to, you know, uh, ask me those questions within the chat box itself. Uh, uh, and at the end, we I will be taking up all those questions and answering them accordingly. Now, uh, let's get started with the uh, exam structure, first of all. So when it comes to the changes within the optional papers, the first basic thing that you have to know here is that uh, the changes are basically effective for the uh, exam setting of September 2022 for the papers uh, AAA, APM, as well as AFM. For the advanced taxation paper, the changes would be effective from the uh, June 2023 exam setting. So that's a really important uh, thing that you have to keep in mind if any of you are uh, attending the uh, advanced taxation paper uh, as there, uh, if you have chosen the advanced taxation paper as your optional papers. Now, moving on. So when we talk about the changes, there are some syllabus wise changes in each of those subjects. And that's uh, that's something that you may have already known uh, since you are like learning all those uh, subjects individually. But more and about that, there are also some changes reflected or uh, which are common among all these optional subjects based on the on the basis of the exam structure itself. So when, it, when we talk about the exam structure, there are, uh, I would say, quite a few changes there. First of all, we have the alignment of marks. We have professional marks introduced to our exam. And I wouldn't say introduced because we already had like, you know, four professional marks within each subject, but now the proportion of professional marks that we have available for each of, of each of the optional papers have increased to 20 marks. So it's kind of similar to what we would have in, uh, what we would have seen in the SBL paper if you attended that as well. So uh, it's kind of like the same proportion. We have 80 technical marks for each of the subjects, technical marks, and then we the rest of the 20 marks are professional marks, which you have to score uh, through demonstrating professional skills within your answer as well. Now, to give you a brief idea, when it comes to you know, these professional marks, it's not about writing something extra into your uh, particular answer. It's more about reflecting the skills through providing the uh, you know, uh, answer for the technical marks. That's basically all there is to it. I will get into that in a bit more detail, and we will be looking at uh, you know, some of the uh, professional skills and how you can demonstrate that within the exam as well. But more than about that, the first and foremost thing that we will be looking at is basically the exam structure. So how has the exam structure changed? Was there any sort of increase when it comes to the uh, you know, timing aspect of it, et cetera? Let's take a look at that first of all. So when we look, uh, take a look at the exams, that is AAA, APM, and AFM for the upcoming September session, it's still a three hour and 15 minutes exam. So we have like changed the mark allocation uh, kind of similar to SBL, but not the time. Okay, because the time still remains to be uh, three hours and 15 minutes. But when it comes to the mark allocation, we have 150 mark in section A for uh, all these three subjects, that is uh, advanced audit and assurance, advanced performance management, and advanced financial management as well. And out of these 50 mark, 40 marks will be technical marks. Okay, books, te technical marks, which you will have to write by answering the particular requirements. That's basically it. And 10 marks will be for demonstrating the professional skills in your answer. And then you will also have the uh, section B as well. In section B, we have uh, two 25 mark uh, case study questions as well. And within each of these 25 marks, we have 20 marks as technical marks as well as five marks as professional marks as well. Okay, folks. So that gives us a total of 10 marks in section A as professional marks and 10 marks in section B as professional marks as well. Okay, folks. So this is how the new exam structure is all about. <clears throat> now, if there is a change in the exam structure, so you may have a question that, you know, would there be any change in the time allocation strategy that we have to adopt when attending the exam as well, isn't it? So let's talk about uh, that as well. 
So folks, as we all know, in ACCA, we have a step-by-step -step process in tackling these uh, uh, exam case study questions, isn't it? We read the requirement, we read the scenario, we plan our answer, and then write our exam, isn't it? So I'll be dividing the, uh, uh, the time allocation for each of these into two phases. We have reading and planning, as well as writing the answer. So the primary change when it comes to uh, the, uh, with the introduction of professional skills is that there should be some more time allocated to think of a plan or think of a structure for your answer. That's the first and foremost thing. You will have to you know, uh, do what I would say uh, three or four minutes in order to uh, think out as to whether you are able to reflect, uh, you know, uh, reflect the uh, professional skills within your answers or not. Or have I identified the right points that can get me those professional marks? So that's the that's the primary question that uh, you have to uh, men, uh, mention first of all. Now, uh, another thing would be the uh, that it used to be twenty minutes that should have been allocated for reading and planning when it comes to the fifty mark question, but now it will be twenty five minutes for uh, for reading and planning. Now. <clears throat> When it comes to reading and planning, you would be allocating 25 minutes and uh, for uh, for reading the requirement and then reading the scenario. And in order to uh, you know think of a structure for your answer overall. And for writing, you should take around uh, one hour and five minutes and nothing more than that because you know anything more than that would uh, you know make make you uh, lose out on marks or miss out on the last question when it comes to the exam. So uh, strictly follow your time strategy when. Uh, you know, doing questions as well as uh, attending the main exam as well. Now, moving on to section B, the 25 mark question, we have eight minutes allocated to reading and planning and 37 minutes to write the answer as well. Again, we, we should take a sufficient amount of time to make sure that we are, uh, you know, making good observations from the scenario as well as utilizing all the information in the scenario and identifying the relation between those information, et cetera, depending upon the various subjects that, uh, you know, uh, that you will be attending in the exam. Now, uh, moving on to the, uh, as, as, for, uh, as for the subjects uh, AAA and APM, I would say that there is a significant change within the syllabus as well, because when it comes to the AAA exam, there was a new introduction of ISQM standards, for example, International Standards on Quality Management, uh, which has been newly introduced into the syllabus. So that's a really key uh, point. And this is something, th these are kind of like the, we have covered all these updates within uh, our sessions at different time as well. So that's a really uh, a key, key, I would say, addition to the syllabus. And more than about that, uh, we also have some new, uh, I would say, syllabus-wise additions and removals conducted in the syllabus of APM or Advanced Performance Management as well. In the Advanced Performance manage, uh, Management, we have, uh, removed a particular topic known as the corporate failure, that particular area that has been removed from the previous syllabus area. Uh, and more than about that, there, ha there has been a new introduction of uh, technological syllabus topics, such as data analytics or uh, data analytics was already there, but more than about that, there are topics in relation to data silos, as well as uh, methods of uh, like uh, methods of conducting data analysis, et cetera. And a lot of really interesting topics in that particular area has been introduced as well. And this is yet again covered throughout our various lectures within uh, that we provide throughout our sessions. Now, as for the AFM, I would say that there has been a new introduction of integrated reporting concepts within, to, uh, within the syllabus and removal of uh, areas such as RHOs, RHS and Vega, et cetera. So that's, that's kind of the syllabus wise update, I would say. And uh, one thing that you have to note here is that it's not just about the uh, you know professional marks and professional marks should not be our primary concern when it comes to the exam because as I stated earlier it's not something that you write additionally isn't it it's all about uh, you know how you would uh, demonstrate your answer however the key thing here or the majority of the marks is still available for the technical marks isn't it so uh, the the new addition of pro the new I would say introduction of professional marks should not enable you to uh, ignore the technical marks from the exam. That's a really uh, key, I would say, mistake that you should avoid as well. Now, moving on to the next aspect, that is professional skills. So let's let's speak more on this, uh, and we would be considering all these subjects as well. So first of all, 
let's talk about as to what the communication professional skill is all about. <clears throat> so when it comes to the communication skill, there are two basic points that you have to keep in mind here. One is that your explanation, the answer that you provide should be clear and convincing. And secondly, you have to respond in a professional manner to the instructions that has been provided to you as well. So when we speak about the, when we talk about the instructions, what do I mean here exactly? So when it comes to most of the case study questions or especially the you know, 50 mark questions, you would be required to respond to, uh, if, it's, if it's in the case of a AAA paper, then you would have to respond in the form of a briefing note to the uh, audit partner. Or if, in, if it's the case of advanced performance management, you will have to present your uh, answer in the form of a report, et cetera, isn't it? So that's basically the uh, idea here. So you will have to provide the format of that within your answer, which is something that we have been doing for the past few exam settings as well. So that's still there. And you would get around, I would say, three to four marks uh, for, uh, you know, fixing the format or providing the format of reports or briefing notes or various other aspects, as well as, uh, you know, uh, but for providing like structured headings, there should be a main heading as well as subheadings accordingly. That's a really uh, important thing to uh, remember as well. And more and about that, there's, there should also be an introduction and conclusion. That's, that's a really uh, mandatory thing now as well in order to get these professional marks. So that's like the basic thing that you need to have in order to get those professional marks. Now, moving on to the uh, next aspect of it, that is clear and convincing explanation. So this is something uh, that's, I would say, uh, could be a bit difficult for, uh, you know, especially those students who have English as a second language, but uh, it's not about the grammar or the spellings that's more important, but rather are you are you conveying what you're intending to convey? That's basically the uh, primary focus when it comes to communication here. Provide or, or provide clear explanations. Structure your answer using you know head, headings as well as paragraphs, and then you can definitely communicate everything in a uh, in a bit more cleaner manner. I would say, and uh, you know use professional language in your answers, and then it'll be good. Uh, the communication skill marks would be uh, you know scored easily. As simple as that. So that's all about the communication skill aspect of it. Now moving on to the commercial acumen skills. What is commercial acumen all about? Commercial acumen is all about providing business, having that business understanding of the particular scenario that you are dealing with. So if you're considering uh, an APM question, then most definitely uh, you would be able to understand that uh, you know, th that's this particular organization that is APM, sorry, this particular organization within the scenario itself is, uh, is basically uh, as to what industry does it operate in or, uh, you know, how does it function? What are the systems that they have in place within that organization? All these things would be understandable from the scenario itself, right? So the key aspect here is to demonstrate awareness or understand the entire scenario or or obtain the bigger picture of the scenario. That's basically the first thing that you have to do in order to get these professional marks. It's, it's not about thinking in your mind, but also about you know, demonstrating it in, in your answer as well. So make good points uh, or make points that enables the examiner to understand that you know the business and you know what the scenario is and you have considered all the information within the scenario as well. So that's basically how you get these uh, professional marks in commercial acumen. And it's also about showing insight. So once you know the bigger picture as to what the organization is, or uh, what are the what are the uh, I would say uh, what are the information, what all information uh, do you have available for the organization? That then definitely you would be able to provide good recommendations for the organizations, or you would be able to make good observations. Uh, regarding let's say uh, several aspects such as if you're considering the AAA paper then you can definitely point out business risk significant business risk that occurs within the organization that's a common question in the 50 mark area isn't it so that's basically how you demonstrate the commercial skill just understand the business organization how it operates and uh you know uh do, what kind of recommendations can you provide to that uh, organizations, et cetera? Or what would be the impact of a decision made by the organization? That's how, that's how you, uh, you know, score these uh, professional marks on commercial acumen. Now, moving on to the next aspect, that is identify key issues. So what is identify key issues and use judgment all about? 
So yet again, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the AAA paper, there's a question that would require you to identify the uh, you know business risks from the scenario, and you will have to explain as to what the business risk is, uh, provide the impact of that, and maybe uh, you will have to like recommend certain solutions for it if possible as well. It depends upon the scenario entirely, but the idea is that you should identify key issues within the business, and then use your judgment to provide recommendations. That's basically the uh, aspect of that. That's basically what commercial acumen is all about. Uh, now, moving on to the next aspect, that is professional skepticism is another professional skill that you would have to demonstrate in the exam, especially it's really important when it comes to the uh, AAA exam as well. So professional skepticism itself is a, a, a common professional skill in all the exams, that is AAA, APM, and AFM as well. But more than about that, when it comes to the AAA exam, you have to exercise not only professional skepticism, but also judgment as well. So what is this professional skepticism all about? Let's, let's understand that first of all. So you will be provided with a lot of information within your scenario, isn't it? So the idea behind professional skepticism is that you, you shouldn't comply with all the scenarios. You, you shouldn't you should consider all the information within the scenario and challenge those information which you think would be relevant. So that's basically the uh, idea here. So you're not going to blindly accept all the information that has been provided in the scenario. You will have to you know, challenge those information which you think is kind of inappropriate or uh, there's something wrong with it, et cetera. That's basically the idea here. For example, uh, let's take uh, you know, AAA as an example here. So in the AAA exam, the scenario might say that uh, you know, the management has done a particular accounting treatment and they think that it's correct. However, we can't just blindly believe them, isn't it? So we will have to make sure as to whether that particular accounting treatment is actually correct. And then you know, that's how you challenge the information. If there is any sort of mistake into it, you point that out, et cetera. Okay, folks, that's basically all it is. So that's basically as to what uh, professional skepticism is primarily all about as well. Explore the scenario, understand all the information, just like what we did in commercial acumen as well, and then challenge the information which you think, uh, using your judgment, is uh, irrelevant or uh, there's something wrong with it, etc. That's basically what professional skepticism is all about. And of course, exercising judgment can, uh, you know, is primarily focused on the AAA paper, whereas uh, you know, uh, when it comes to APM or AFM, it's all about, uh, you know, challenging the information itself. That's basically all there is to it. So I don't, uh, the primary po point or the ultimate point here is that do not just blindly accept everything in the scenario just as it is. Challenge the information if you seem, if it seems irrelevant to you or if it seems uh, that something's wrong within the scenario. That's basically all there is to it. Now, moving on to the next uh professional skill that is analysis and evaluation. So when it comes to analysis and evaluation, what we do is, this is a really, I would say, I would say obvious skill that you need to have when it comes to all of the exam, all of the optionals exams. Uh, we consider all the information yet again, provided in the scenario, and then we conduct a careful assessment as well. Now, what exactly is a careful assessment or what would it be exactly? Careful assessment is all about pointing out the, not just the negative aspect of it, but also the positive aspect of it as well. Evaluation, as well as, you know, assessment, all these things mean that you have to point out what are the strengths in the scenario, as well as what, is, what are the weaknesses as well. So this particular understanding should be demonstrated in your answer. Do you know what is good for the organization? Do you know what are the bad things of an organization? For example, uh, in an APM question, let's say, you, you are given with a scenario relating to a particular system within the organization and you are required to point out what are, or you are required to evaluate that particular system. If that is the case, then you will have to point out as to what are the good things about the system and what are its advantages as well as what are its disadvantages as well, right? So that's basically as to what evaluation is all about. And more than about that, it's not, it's not all about, you know, using the financial data that has been provided to you in the question, especially when it comes to AFM paper, uh, you will be provided with a lot of uh, like financial information when it comes to the organization, isn't it? And it's the same goes for APM or even AAA as well. So it's all about uh, using the financial information there as well as the non-financial information as well. And 
It's also about using the information given in the scenario as well. Okay, folks, highlight the relevant factors in the scenario. Try to try to find a correlation between the you know numerical data as well as the in information provided in paragraphs, etc. That's basically as to what analysis is all about. And yet again, this can only be uh, you know uh, understood. This, this can only be demonstrated once you have the complete picture of the scenario. So I would say that with the introduction of professional skills. You could say that uh, you know there's a heightened importance now of understanding the scenario for completely, and uh, there's also a, it's also relevant that you don't miss out on relevant information as well. So there should be considerable amount of time allocated to read through the scenario and to highlight the relevant points and assess as to whether as to what are the useful information that we would require and what are the uh, you know irrelevant information that we should ignore as well. And more and about that, uh, you should also find the relations between, you know, relevant information provided in the scenario, and you will have to, uh, you know, point out or you will have to make good observations. We can't just simply state what the issue is and then, uh, you know, let it be. We, we may have to deep dive into certain issues that we identify and explain it in a bit more elaborate manner. That's basically uh, as to what the professional skill conveys uh, in each of the subjects as well. So that's basically, uh, these are basically the four professional skills that are, uh, you know, that are to be demonstrated in your exam. And it can be de demonstrated in uh, different methods as well. Now, let's talk about the resources uh, that are available to us, you know, to prepare effectively for the exam. So first of all, let me just say that uh, when it comes to the, uh, when it comes to all of the papers, we have a few questions available within the uh, ACC's website itself. I can share that uh, shortly. One second. It's basically available within the ACC practice platform. I can just share that in a moment. In the meanwhile, you can just uh, shoot any questions that you have within the chat box as well, and I'll be taking that up. <clears throat> So just one observation. All right. Do, do we, the questions that have been given to us uh, in the sessions, do we have the professional skills there? Okay, okay, so yeah. Okay, so uh, yes, we do, uh, you know, with. Uh, you mean the sessions provided by Fintran in the sense, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yes, we, we have, you know, included all those aspects throughout our sessions as to how to, like, demonstrate uh, professional skills in our answers or uh, how do you tackle these, this newly introduced system. This particular thing has been, uh, you know, demonstrated, uh, especially when it comes to the system of uh, sessions for, like, advanced audit and assurance as well as, for the APM subjects, I can guarantee you that primarily, as well as for uh, I believe SBL uh, as well. That's 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 demonstrated over there as well. This has been included more than the sessions where we like practice a lot of questions in between. We, we like practice a lot of questions with in between sessions while learning the syllabus itself. But more than about that, we uh, we have demonstrated as to how to like tackle these questions within the CBE environment when it comes to the uh, you know revision boot camps as well. Revision boot camp is all about you know, revising through the syllabus, but also about, you know, practicing questions within the platform itself, especially past papers. And I believe I have demonstrated uh, in, in a few sessions, I have demonstrated how to tackle, uh, you know, some of these questions that I'm about to show you within the CBE environment as well. So as you can see on my screen, is my screen visible to you all? Can you show me a thumbs up yes, to ensure? Yes, sir. Okay. So as you can see here, we have the subjects provided at the right hand side of the screen. And you can just uh, access any of the resource from within this particular platform as well. So if you click on, let's say the advanced origin assurance, you would see that we have a blank workspace where we can like practice random questions, which we may find in, uh, let's say several of the other resources like exam kits, et cetera. And you can also find some, uh, you know, uh, resources, ECC official resources for the various variants of uh, each of these subjects as well. For the international variant, we have the past exam library, which I don't think uh, has been updated yet. 
you know, not yet, but the updated set of, uh, I would say, questions would be available in the pra exam practice section right here, which is valid from September 2022. So we have three exams available over here, and I believe we also have a specimen exam somewhere as well. So you can have a look at that. So when it comes to uh, the other subjects, we yet again have is the official resources, especially you know the practice exams. We have three practice exams made available currently uh, for each of these subjects as of now. So you can perhaps take a look and practice uh, a few questions there. I would say there are around uh, you know uh, nine questions or so available within the website itself. So you could take a look at that. You could practice those as well. And of course, uh, you know if you're someone who is interested in our uh, let's say revision bootcamp as well. We have quite a few questions being practiced within uh, over there as well. Kipok, we, we demonstrated as to, uh, when it comes to the question marathon, we like provide you with video lectures on how to like tackle these con uh, kinds of questions and get these professional marks and how the market location works how, and what is to be expe expected, what is expected by the examiners, etc. All these things are, uh, you know, covered within that particular set of uh, revision bootcamp videos that that has been made available to you. So yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, this is this is basically uh, you know what I wanted to cover in this particular session. So uh, I am happy to take up any questions that you may have. <clears throat> Another thing that I'd like to suggest is that you might be interested, most definitely be interested in you know how the. Uh, professional skills would be demonstrated in each of the individual subjects itself. Well, as I stated earlier, you could, you know, access our, uh, let's say, uh, you know, revision boot camps, etc., in order to learn those and more and about that. There are also some resources provided by ICC themselves as well. I'm just gonna show you about uh, how to access that as well. One second. Let me just share my screen again. So is it visible? Can you give me a thumbs up again? <clears throat> it's not visible yet. Yes, it's visible. Okay, thank you for confirming, Ishan. Now, uh, all you have to do is you just have to go to the uh, student support resources over here. Click on ACC qualification and select the relevant subject for whose resource you want. So I'm just gonna select, let's say AAA for now. And as you can see here, we have the professional skills changes mentioned here. So you can refer to this particular article and understand how the uh, you know professional skills are communicated or how, how the particular thing should be demonstrated in, uh, you know, in each of the, for each of the professional skills individually as well. That's a really good resource that we have for all of the uh, subjects at the moment. And of course, we we don't necessarily have any examiner's report because you know the upcoming session is will be the first session where the you know twenty marks worth of professional skills would be or professional marks would be introduced first of all. So uh, we may not have the uh, you know examiner's report regarding that, but. More and about that, we, sh we we do have a lot of other examiner's report from the previous attempts where you can still learn how to as to what the examiner's expectations are regarding, you know, making good points in the exam as well as making good observations, etc. What what the strong candidates do or what the what the poor candidates do, all these things can be understood from uh, or by taking a look at the examiner's report as well. That's yet again another really good resource that I would recommend for all subjects. So yeah. All right, so do you guys have any other questions? If you have, let me know. Which ACC book you would refer for APM, BBP or Kaplan or any other? Well, when it comes to uh, resources, first of all, I would obviously recommend, you know, uh, the resources provided by Fintram Global. We, we basically provide video lectures where you can you know, understand what the syllabus is all about, first of all. And then we provide this uh, revision bootcamp where we provide you with a revision video throughout the, uh, of the key examinable areas of each subjects. And after that, uh, you can also get some, you know, uh, questions which which you would solve, uh, you know, with the lecture itself. It, it's a it's a recorded video uh, question that uh, that you uh, that you can use to understand uh, 
uh, how these questions are tackled as well as where, uh, as I stated earlier, you will be able to understand how the marks are allocated or how, sh how you should plan to tackle these questions, how to demonstrate professional marks, especially all these things are, uh, you know, covered in those lectures uh, as well as those questions as well. So you could use that. And as for BPP or Kaplan, well, I would say I would be indifferent here because, you know, both these exam kits kind of have the common questions. So, you know, the more practice, the better, right? But, uh, but when it comes to, you know, uh, in between these two options, that is BPP and Kaplan, I would say, uh, just go for one of them, either one of them, that's totally, uh, you know, uh, your choice. But I would, I would go for one of them, because, you know, there are really a lot of common questions in both these uh, resources. Thank you, sir. Sure. Any other questions, guys? Sir, will you provide us mock exams? Yes, we will be. Yeah, we do provide, you know, mock exams uh, and check how this. Yes, definitely. So, uh, yes, we do. That's a, that's a, I'm glad that you raised that point as well. So when it comes to, uh, you know, the professional skills or demonstrating the professional skills, it's always good to have a feedback from a tutor when once you attend a particular question or not, right? So uh, I would say mock exams is really essential when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, attending the exam for the upcoming session. So, and, and we at Fintram Global, we do provide mock exams to student, to our students who have, uh, you know, purchased the uh, AAA as well as the uh, APM uh, resources. So yes, we do provide the mock exams and we do provide individual feedback uh, on these as to whether, as you mentioned, we do provide the, uh, you know, insight as to how, as to whether you are, as to whether you have, you know, demonstrated the professional skill in your answers, as well as what are the, your areas of improvement, et cetera. All these things will be, uh, you know, uh, provided to you as a feedback for the mock exams that you're conducting with us uh, for, the, for the respective subject. Anything else? So really scared with the professional marks. Okay. So there's nothing to be scared about here because, you know, uh, I would rather look on the positive side of it because as of now, you don't necessarily have to write for, you know, like a hundred marks or even let's say 90. You used to like write your answers, like the technical answers. You used to write that for like 96 marks or so in the previous sessions, right? So now you just have to write it for 80, 80 marks. So that's like a, a more advantage to it. And, uh, and yeah, uh, you have struggled in SBL as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, Calm down, first of all, and uh, I would say that, that when it comes to the, uh, you know, uh, professional marks, it's more about, as I stated, it's, it's not about writing something extra. You don't have to write anything extra to score these professional marks. It's, it's more about, uh, you know, getting or demonstrating it in your answers itself. And that's something that uh, I would say you would get the hang of if, especially when you have the guidance of a tutor uh, to guide you through this as well. So that's, 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 not, that's something that I would highly suggest just, uh, you know, uh, do the paper under a tutor and, and then, uh, you know, uh, attend mock exams to get feedback on your answers and maybe even, you know, ask a tutor to uh, just, uh, you know, provide you with the feedback on some demo answers that you're writing as well. So it's all about improving that skill of answering the questions. So yeah, professional skills, there's nothing to be worried about. It it actually makes a lot of things easier as well. So I would say just, uh, you know, uh, keep calm and keep on practicing more questions uh, on a time uh, timely basis. So yeah, as many as you can. That's something that I would recommend as well. And another question is, uh, so which paper to attempt first, AAA or APM with, this is my first professional exam. Okay. So I would say go for, if your option is between, uh, let's say, AAA and APM, I would rather go for APM first because when it comes to the AAA exam, that is something that you can only attempt after your uh, SBR exam because we use SBR level. And, you know, as a AAA faculty myself, I could uh, tell you that, uh, you know, when it comes to the, uh, you know, AAA paper, we have like, I would say around 60% uh, of the syllabus itself is uh, the accounting standards that you learn uh, within the SBR level. SBR paper. Okay, folks, you, so we have SBR level accounting standards being tested in the AAA paper. So I would say, uh, you know, as your first paper, you can either go for APM and then 
maybe SBR and then uh, you know AAA. Or uh, yeah, if you have any other options, then you can go for that as well. So between AAA and APM, I would say go for APM as your first professional exam. Okay, great. Uh, any other questions, guys? <clears throat> Can we can we get a uh, question solved by you using these professional skills just to understand them better? Yes, definitely. As I stated earlier, uh, you know the revision boot camp that you that you're provided with it does have uh, it does have the uh, you know uh, questions where uh, where the you know professional skills have been introduced. So. Uh, you will be given all the you know updated questions within the marathon itself so you can practice that perhaps and if in case you have any like questions in between for example uh, once you're done with a particular questions on your own you may have some sort of question uh, some sort of you know questions as to whether you've done things right or wrong right so for those instances uh, you know you could perhaps contact the tutors at Fintram global and they can you know solve the questions for you i mean uh, make you understand as to where you went wrong, etc. So there's that. Thanks, sir. So when is sure. the next uh, live session coming for AAA? Uh, I I do have few questions to really ask on that. I okay. I okay. appeared in the last attempt, but it was not mm -hmm. clear. So I've just taken your course. Uh, okay. So had few concerns. When can I? Uh, there's actually a AAA session, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow. So you can perhaps attend that. And we, you, we usually conduct all these live sessions on a, on a, on a, on a weekend basis. So, so every weekend we will have, uh, you know, uh, we, we will have a live sessions being conducted for doubt clearing. And sometimes we also discuss these, you know, updates as well as professional skills. We may like to do, uh, do some questions or uh, we discuss the technical articles or examiner's report, et cetera, it, it, within each of these live sessions. So you can, you know, attend one of those. You can just contact the team and they'll uh, give you the invite link for that. Especially since you're a student, you will be, uh, you know, given that particular link. Thank you, sir. Sure. And I have another question from Manohar, SVR or SBL, which should be which should start work. I, I would, I'm kind of indifferent between uh, those two subjects because there are like two routes. It's like two routes that you can follow. Either you can start with SBR. If you're starting with SBR, then I would say go for the, uh, if you if AAA is in your option, then go for AAA and then the rest of the papers. Or uh, if you are, let's say going for SBL uh, first, then, uh, you know, my personal, it's just a personal opinion. My personal opinion would be to like, get the SBL paper done first because uh, because I'm more interested in, you know, doing the bigger papers, uh, I mean, completing the or clearing the bigger papers first. So I would just go for SBL in, on that basis. Now, uh, more than about that, I would say if you are, let's say, go, uh, taking up SBL, then I would say take up APM after that, if that's in your option, and then the rest of the papers. So it's like two routes. So I, I would be indifferent in between, you know, both of these. But considering the, uh, you know, time that we have, yeah, I, I would be still be indifferent because especially for SBL, we have like a, uh, you know, a six weeks plan to clear that exam. I think you would have, you know, seen that through various YouTube videos, et cetera. So perhaps you can check that out as well. Okay, sir. Thank you. I will rethink sure. about that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Great. All right. Uh, any other questions, guys? <clears throat> Thanks, sir. Your question was really great. Thank you. And let me know if you have any other questions as well. Okay. Okay. Thanks, sir. Very really helpful. Thanks. Helpful. Okay. Great. Great. It's good. It's really great to know that. Uh, and. If you have any sort of questions, please uh, let me know. We do have like uh, five, 10 minutes more. So yeah. <clears throat> 
All right, then uh, I'll be, uh, if there are no more questions, then I'll be winding up the session. So uh, thank you all for your time and I hope you enjoyed the session. And uh, I really wish you all the very best for your upcoming exam. Prepare well, practice a lot of questions and get, uh, get you know, uh, feedbacks from your respective tutors, et cetera, uh, regarding your professional skills. There's nothing to be afraid about. It's kind of an advantage because, uh, you know, as I stated earlier, you will have to like uh, write less and you get to score more. So, uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's a really good advantage, especially, you know, since we used to have, you know, time management problems with these exams and all. So, uh, you know, uh, consider it in a, or approach it in a positive attitude, practice a lot of questions and get compatible with this uh, new style of uh, exams. So, yeah. So uh, thank you all. And I hope to see you again in some other sessions. Bye. Thank you.